Well, parts came in today for the TV. We got uh, our packaging with the capacitors from DigiKey. And, and we got this padded envelope which is supposed to contain the good used SDRU board. Well, I'm happy to see that inside the padded envelope is a cardboard box to protect the board. So, the lower one here is my original board that I removed with the short on it. And above we have the replacement board that was sent to me. And it sure looks like a perfect match. Right down to the part numbers. Ooh, those are big honking capacitors. Those look taller. Quite a bit taller. Hopefully they're going to work. Alright, so this is the uh, DigiKey part number that I ended up ordering. Uh, it's a P6809 dash N is in Nancy, D is in Delta. N is in November, D is in Delta. And it's a aluminum capacitor, uh, radial lead 3300 microfarad, 100 volt uh, snap in type. Although they don't really snap in, they're soldered in. Alright, so we know these are 30 millimeter in diameter because that's what I specced. So let's go see how these look on the board. Okay, first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to unplug these plugs. What I like to do is um, I like to count how many plugs I unplug and then keep that number in mind so that when I'm plugging them all back in I, uh, I'll know I won't miss a plug. This isn't too bad because there aren't that many plugs. The other thing I want to keep in mind is I want to also take note of any plugs that are similar or identical so that if there's a situation where I could inadvertently switch two plugs and uh, put them in the wrong place I won't end up doing that. The good news is it looks like from what I could see on this board I don't have any plugs that are identical. Looks like we've got only there's no plug here. We have one plug here, two, three, four, five. I only see five plugs on this. These two are close, but this one appears to have one or two more pins than this one does. And this one has all brown wires and it's to the right. So just in case I need to keep that in mind. All right, so these two plugs, just carefully wiggle them and they can pull right straight out. And that's the same with this type of plug here. This one is a little different. This is a locking plug. There's actually a plastic tab right here and you have to push on the side of the plastic tab and then wiggle and it'll pull right out. So that's number four. And then you've got this, this is your main AC feed. This is where the 120 volts comes in to the power supply from this little board right here which has the standby vacation switch on it and some surge protection and a line fuse. Alright, so pop that one. That's number five. Now all I have to do is remove the screws. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, and there's a sixth screw that's kind of hidden under this ribbon cable right there. Looks like we only have six screws. In the center, we have these little plastic standoffs, which sometimes you have to squeeze them a little bit with pliers to get them to release the board. And we have one there, one in the very center there, and one here. All right, I want to make note of which screws go where, because these are different screws. You'll notice the screw I just took out of here, you see these little marks right here, that's left by a little star washer. So there's a star washer on the screw that goes here. That's a grounding screw. That little metal tab right there, when that screw's in place, it actually grounds, it makes an electrical ground. Same thing with the one in this corner. This one right here has a plastic washer, some type of insulator. And then the three across the top are identical. They just have regular flat little washers. Another thing I like to do is I have these Exolite brand screwdrivers and these have magnetic tips and they're really handy for uh, getting screws like this out because uh, I like the long using this long handle one because I can spin 
the uh, the shaft quickly and the other thing that's nice is it'll actually hold that screw a little bit with the magnetism I've got all the screws out but if I try and lift up on the board it doesn't seem to want to come out and this is where you want to avoid the mistake of forcing anything because you could easily crack the PC board and damage it and the reason why it's not coming out is because of these plastic standoffs that I was talking about so I'm going to need my needle nose pliers to get those all right, I just released this plastic pin, but I just want to show you on the wide sides, you just squeeze it, and as you're squeezing it, lightly pull up on the board, and it will release. I can't do it with one hand holding the camera, but squeeze it like this, and as you're squeezing it, lightly pull up, and the board will pop off. There we go. Now the board's out. You can see i got a lot of dust in here. Now I want to be real careful, I don't want to go really brushing or anything like that, but if you've got uh, some blow-off compressed air in a can, that's the perfect item to use on a job like this to blow this dust away. Or uh, if you're real careful, you can use a vacuum cleaner and just kind of hold the wand without touching any components just in the area to suck the, the uh, dust up. Okay, I've got my solder and iron hot, but I forgot to wet my sponge. All right, now electrolyte capacitors like this, they have polarity. In other words, there's a negative and a positive side. If you look, there's a stripe on this side right here and here. That's the negative side of the capacitor. You'll see the new ones, even though they're black in color, they also have a stripe. And you can see on the stripe, these are actually minus signs, denoting that that's the negative side of the capacitor. So we have to make sure that we put these in correctly. If you put these in backwards, not only will the unit not function, but these can actually swell up and explode. Okay, now I'm going to invert the board component side down, and I'm noticing that the negative sides are both facing down right now. So if I put the board down this way, that means that the negative side is going to be this pin and this pin, both pins closest to that direction. Here's an interesting thing. We've got a little arrow pointing to this pin, which is the positive pin on this capacitor, but you'll, so, you'll see that the arrow on this one is pointing to the negative pin on this capacitor. So the arrows aren't there to denote which side is negative and positive on the capacitor. The arrows are just there to denote what, uh, most likely test points for voltage. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to desolder. Now, to desolder the components, there's a couple of things we can do. Um, depending on your preference or what you have, there's several different methods for desoldering. I'll just go over a couple. So, essentially, what we've got you've got large pins like this with a lot of solder that can be removed, like on a transformer or what. Uh, you can use what we call a solder sucker. Uh, this is one I've had for, oh, probably 15 years now and the way this works is this is a spring-loaded piston inside here and when I push this button you'll see this actually shoots up and what that does is that causes a rapid sudden vacuum on that tip right there so the idea is you get the solder molten so it will flow with the soldering iron tip and then put this in proximity, press the button and it will suck a big gob of solder up and then you push this all the way down and if you push it past the spring loader part there's a little metal protrusion there that will push out the little solder on, onto the, your, your waste pile. And then the other way you can do it is you could use what's commonly called solder wick. Uh, this is Archer brand. This is you can pick up at your local Radio Shack. They call it desoldering braid. But what I noticed is this stuff doesn't work anywhere near as well as the stuff I've used most of my life, which is this stuff, which actually the label fell off. But this is what's called Chemwick in the industry. Uh, and uh, I've always found this stuff to be much better. And you can see that the braid is a little bit different. Now, if you only have solder wick or desoldering braid, you can use that to remove all the solder from these pins. 
uh, but you'll end up using a lot of braid. What I like to do is I like to use my solder sucker first, get the bulk of it off like I did here. See that's the waste pile. So now all I have to do is come back and I can clean up with the solder braid. Now you can even use these pins are pretty robust so they'll take quite a bit of heat without damaging any components. So you could use a uh, soldering gun in a situ situation like this if it's all you had. But you wouldn't want to use a gun on any of these small tiny connections. Of course if you're working on replacing any of these surface mount devices uh, or IC chips, chances are you're a lot more advanced and uh, know enough to not use a gun on something like that. Okay, I've just completed removing the solder with using the uh, desoldering braid. So now, if I reach underneath here, if I gently wiggle, I should be able to remove those capacitors. Now the other thing about these caps is I noticed at least one of them has got this goop on it, kind of gluing it to the capacitor next to it. So if you turn it back over here, you'll actually see there's goop right in here that's kind of gluing this one to this one. And there's goop right in here gluing this side of this one to this one. Uh, but this one stands alone, doesn't look like it's got any goop in it. So you see this one, how loose that is. And it's uh, pretty much ready to be pulled right out. And the pins, they have almost like a, a barb to them or they're kind of like wide. So I think that's what they mean by snap in. So, uh, and it just came out like that. Now what's nice is they mark the board. There's a white line on this side to denote that again, that's the negative side. You can actually see the negative side on this capacitor it lines up with that white, white mark right there. So that's nice. You can see how rounded the top of that capacitor is. might not look it but it is as opposed to these which sit nice and flat so now we can see the height difference but as luck would have it we've got the extra room in there to put these in so as far as the, the goop goes we can just use an exacto knife or a razor blade and slice right through that goop all right and that's exactly what I did and so now this one pops right out and this one also it's a little bellowed up now if I wanted to I could put this on my capacitor analyzer and see what it's doing I would imagine this probably has high ESR equivalent series resistance that's a typical failure on a lot of these caps when they balloon up like that they also might be leaky which means they allow leakage current to flow which is bad all right, so now I'm going to install the new ones. So I want my negative side to go like that. And same thing with this one, the negative side. Just like they came out, both negatives facing that way. Now I'm going to invert the board again. 